Has capitalism gone wrong? Let's start by defining what we mean by capitalism. And in order to do that, it's probably best to take an example. Something like Sainsbury's. Anyone who's been to Sainsbury's has observed all the capital at Sainsbury's. You've seen the vehicles driving around, and you've seen the checkout computers. And if you total the value of that capital, it comes to around 12 billion US dollars. Sainsbury's sales are about 30 billion US dollars. On the other hand, let's take a company like Microsoft. If we look for the plant and the vehicles and the buildings, basically there's hardly anything. And that value comes to around 5 billion, but Microsoft sales are around 85 billion. These modern companies seem to be able to generate three times the amount of sales on around half the kind of assets. That's why we call the title of our book Capitalism Without Capital. What we do in the book is we set out the new forms of intangible capital, which are increasingly at the backbone of our economy. That kind of investment comes from investment in knowledge assets, like design, like movies, like training, and like business processes. And here's what we find. Over time, these investments have become increasingly important. So now, for roughly every pound of tangible investment, there's about one pound 10 of intangible investment. So it's big bananas, but what does it all mean? The nature of investment surely changes a lot. We used to have investment in canals, then we had investment in railways, then in roads, then in airports. So what does the move to knowledge investment mean and why should we care about it? Well, the reason we care about it is that the economic properties of knowledge investment are just very different to those more conventional types of investment. If Sainsbury's want to supply some more customers, they've got to build some more buildings and bring in some more trucks. If Google want to supply some more customers, they just take their existing intangible assets, their software, and they scale it up amongst the new customers. The scalability of intangibles means that we would observe an increasingly unequal economy with the emergence of giant firms able to service vast numbers of customers with very few employees. Of course, those firms would become very desirable places to work as well, and they'd pay very high wages. So the emergence of inequality is going to be one of the characteristics of an intangible economy. This is the kind of economy that we try to document in our book, Capitalism Without Capital.